Good morning. This is another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace and peace to you in the name of God, our Creator, in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer, and in the name of the Holy Spirit that continues to sustain us. A glorious day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Our meditation today that I'd like to bring to you has the theme, Grace, Mercy, and Peace. The words grace and peace are found in all of the Apostle Paul's greetings in his letters to the young Christian churches in Asia Minor. And also in his letter to Timothy and to Titus, he includes the word mercy. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ is our theme. Let us examine each one of these. The word grace. Grace is what our holy and loving God gives us for us as sinful people don't deserve. Still, God gives it to us, even though we don't deserve. And grace is, we do not see grace, but we can feel grace. We can touch grace. We can taste grace. And one of the grace that we can experience is the grace of the sacrament of the Holy Communion, which we will be celebrating today. In the book of Acts, we learn that God gives to all life breath and all things. God's gifts include our very next breath, our very next breath when we inhale and exhale. Even in our darkest hour, strength is given by God so that we can endure whatever betide, especially in this pandemic world. Then mercy. Mercy is what God withholds that we do deserve. In the, book, in the Old Testament, in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22, we read, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. So even when we are wayward, even when we go astray, God gives time and help us to turn back to Him. Help us to return to Him, to His fold, and to His arms. And then peace. Peace is what God brings to God's people, God's shalom. Jesus said when He gathered His disciples for the last time after His resurrection and said to them, Peace I leave with you, my peace. I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Friends, even in the most and even in the worst of times, in this challenging time that we are in of COVID-19, we have an inner tranquility. We have an inner peace, an inner tranquility because God is in control because God is in control and that is our faith that endures. We can be encouraged that throughout our lives, the Lord will give to us that grace, that mercy and peace we need to live for Him, to serve Him all the days of our lives. God's grace is immeasurable. God's mercy is inexhaustible. And God's peace is inexpressible. Finally, friends, on behalf of my daughter and myself, I would like to give thanks first to God and to St. John United Methodist Church for welcoming us in this vibrant congregation and giving us the opportunity to serve God in this congregation. 
Most of you know and have met me before, so I am just so excited to be in ministry with you, to be the hands and feet of Jesus in mission and ministry. Some of you, if not all of you, have already read or, or heard my ministerial background and ministerial experience. And I always tell myself that, that whenever I am appointed to serve a congregation, my goal is always that there is an opportunity to bring the people of God in the knowledge of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And I also know that in my experience as a pastor through the years, that not everyone in the congregation uh, will, will like me as a pastor or will like my style or would agree with me. And that is always a given fact. And that I always tell myself that I am appointed to a church for a mission for a mission not to please everyone, but to please the one who sent me. Similarly, Jesus Christ had a mission on earth when he said, I can do nothing on my own. I seek to do not my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. John chapter 5, verse 30. Therefore, I believe that I am sent and appointed to this congregation of St. John United Methodist Church for a mission to please the one who sent me, not the district superintendent, not the bishop, but God. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the efforts of the staff pastor parish relations committee headed by Brother Jobert Reniva, the transition committee headed by Brother Edwin Mencius, Finance Committee, headed by Sister Bing Romualdo, and the most of all, the untiring work of the head of the Board of Trustees and Parsonage Restoration Renovation Project and the upgrading of the Parsonage, Brother Al Cyrus. And to all of you who, in one way or another, contributed, welcomed me, and contributed to the smooth transition and move to the parsonage and to the church building, the church office. And last but not the least, I'd like to thank my brother-in-law, Mr. Mark Stevens, who flew from Las Vegas on June 15 to help me pack my belongings at Morrison and then move to Lyons and also to Rihanna, who assisted also in the moving and, and in the packing and in the moving. So, I am looking forward. I am looking forward as your pastor for a fruitful and dynamic ministry as your pastor. But for us to realize that is with your full cooperation and faithful involvement in the work of the Lord. All for God's glory. Because as we hear and as we say these days, we are all in this together. So make it happen. We are all in this together. So therefore, let us join our hearts. Let us join our spirit in the mission and ministry that Christ mandated us to go, therefore, and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thank you very much. Good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. God bless.